Hands of My Podcast is a proud member of Dark Cast Network, presenting the brightest of indie podcasts. If you've ever found yourself at the end of a house party, in the grips of a deep conversation with friends too late at night, you'll likely feel at home with Bruh is a Murder. Bruh is a Murder is a podcast covering actual crime cases of color. Join Andre, Battle, Kelly, and Robert as they detail and provide commentary on the most shocking case and the social issues that factor into them. From injustices to cold cases, join the game every Tuesday on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. Hola, my beautiful humans. This is Jasmine Castillo, and I bring stories and cases from the people of color community, bringing awareness of murdered and missing indigenous women, girls, two spirits, the LGBTQ community, Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander, Black indigenous people of color. These are their stories. So welcome to Hands Off, my podcast. I wanted to thank my first time patron, longtime listener, and fairly new member to Uncover.com, Tim Beek, who suggested the story coverage on Kimberly Avila. I greatly appreciate you. Thank you so much. Kimberly Avila was born in Brownsville on October 12, 1984, and grew up there. Kimberly is a loving sibling who enjoys writing, music, dancing, and singing. She is a fan of Britney Spears, Shania Twain, and Lady Gaga. Kimberly also likes to draw dolls and clothes in her journal. When she came out to her family about her sexuality, they were very accepting and promised to always support her no matter what. Kimberly and her sister, Yvonne, had a close relationship. On May 13, 2017, Yvonne expected Kimberly to be at her house for babysitting duties the next morning. When Kimberly didn't return home, it was out of character and caused alarm. This is the story of Romero Kimberly Avila. A little information about the history of Brownsville, Texas, for all my history buffs out there. Brownsville is a city in Cameron County, located, of course, in the United States of Texas, and is situated on the western Gulf Coast in South Texas, adjacent to the border with Matamoros, Mexico. The county covers an area of about 145 square miles and has a population of over 186,000 as recorded by 2020 census. It is ranked 139th largest city in the United States and the 18th largest in Texas, making it part of Matamoros Brownsville metropolitan area. Cameron County enjoys a year-round subtropical climate and boasts a deep water seaport as well as its rich Hispanic culture. The history of Brownsville, Texas dates back to the early 1800s. The area was originally inhabited by the Karankawa and Coahuiltecan Native American tribes. 1828, American entrepreneur Charles Stillman arrived in Matamoros, Mexico to help his father in the mercantile business. Stillman eventually developed a riverboat company which operated between Matamoros and New Orleans. In 1848, after the signing of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, which ended the Mexican-American War, Stillman purchased several land claims next to the Fort Brown, a U.S. military fort that had been established during the war. And Stillman and his partners laid out a town on this land and named it Brownsville after the fort Brownsville was incorporated as a city in 1853, quickly became a major center for trade and commerce. The city's location on the Rio Grande River made it a gateway to Mexico and Latin America. 
Brownsville also became a popular tourist destination, especially during the Prohibition era, when people from the United States would travel to Mexico to drink alcohol. During the Civil War, Brownsville was a key port for the Confederacy. The city was able to supply the Confederacy with cotton and other goods, despite the Union blockade of the Confederate ports. Brownsville was also the site of the Battle of Brownsville in 1863, which was a Confederate victory. After the Civil War, Brownsville continued to grow pro and prosper. The city's economy was based on agriculture, trade, and manufacturing. Brownsville also became a major transportation hub with the construction of railroads, highways, and an airport. And so in the 20th century, Brownsville experienced significant growth and development. The city's population increased from 10,517 in 1900 to over 126,000 in 2020. Brownsville's economy diversified to include industries such as aerospace, healthcare, and tourism. It is a major economic center for the Rio Grande Valley region. And since SpaceX moved to the South Texas in 2013, the region has seen a dramatic transformation. Brownsville was previously the poorest community in the United States, but with SpaceX's presence, it has experienced an influx of jobs and economic growth. The trans community in Brownsville is made up of people of all ages, races, ethnicities, and socioeconomic backgrounds. Some members of the trans community in Brownsville are openly trans, while others may choose to keep their gender identity private. The trans community in Brownsville faces a number of challenges, including discrimination, violence, and lack of access to healthcare and other resources. However, the trans community in Brownsville is also resilient and supportive. There are a number of organizations in Brownsville that provide support and services to the trans community, such as Brownsville LGBTQ Community Center and the Brownsville Transgender Advocacy Coalition. And actually, the Brownsville City Commission approved the creation of a task force on December 5th, 2019 to give the LGBTQ community a voice in addressing discrimination, healthcare concerns, and other related issues in the border city. Local activist Joe Colon Uvayas addressed the commissioners and the mayor about creating this new group at a meeting that was filled with supporters. Albert Hinojosa is a strong advocate for the LGBTQ community. He attended a rally to demonstrate his support and show solidarity with those who have been harassed or discriminated against because of their sexual orientation. His story is one that resonates with many in the community as he was personally subjected to homophobic language while out having dinner with his family. Albert experience highlights the importance of standing up for what is right and serves an example of how even small acts can even make a difference. I just can't get enough of praising the trans community in Brownsville because they are an important part of the city's diversity. The trans community in Brownsville is made up of people who are passionate about making their community a more inclusive and accepting place for all people. And in numerous sources, Ivan Rodarte talks about her family's support for Kimberly Avila. Ivan describes her sister as a member of the Rio Grande Valley LGBTQ community, identifies Kimberly as gender fluid. And in different sources as well as videos, Family members, friends, and community members have used both she, her, hers, and he, him, his pronouns when talking about Avila. Despite the fact that society may have rejected her, Ivan's family has always been there for her. They accepted and supported her no matter what she chose to do with her life. Even when she went out on the streets for fun, it was not because of a lack of acceptance at home. Rather, it was because of the strong relationship she's had with friends and family members. Her father even declared that he would never turn his back on Kimberly and that they were still a family no matter what. This love and acceptance from Kimberly's family shows how much they care deeply despite any societal pressures or expectations. On a peaceful spring evening in Brownsville, 
Elida Avila and her daughter Kimberly found themselves unexpectedly gathering with their family. Despite Kimberly's initial plans to go out, she decided to stay when they started playing Jalupa and she took on the role of reading the cards to everyone. The evening continued for several hours until past midnight when Kimberly asked her sister Yvonne for a ride. Together they embarked on a journey to the bustling downtown district of Brownsville. Yvonne quotes, she was really happy. There was nothing that you would say was worrying her, concerning or nothing like that, end quote. Yvonne dropped Kimberly off at the Washington Street around 2.40 a.m. on May 13, 2017. There were several people walking around and a lot of traffic. Kimberly would usually kiss her sister when saying goodbye, but this time, she just hopped out of the car and said, See you in the morning. I love you. Those early morning hours on May 13th, 2017 was the last time Yvonne saw Kimberly. After realizing that her sibling had not arrived home, Yvonne called their mother and found out that she was not at her home either. Elida had an uneasy feeling and Yvonne went out to look for Kimberly. She immediately started calling hospitals and police departments across the Cameron County inquiring if Kimberly was there. After work that day, the family went back downtown to where Yvonne last saw Kimberly. They started going through the different alleyways and streets asking people nearby if they had seen their family member. No one saw Kimberly that night or witnessed anything suspicious. Even though there were many witnesses that identified Kimberly being seen, but then mysteriously, these witnesses would retract their statements. Yvonne immediately reported Kimberly missing after 24 hours, and when the police department was contacted, the police department seemed to have only reviewed cameras around the border of Mexico inspecting to see if she had crossed over any of the three bridges nearby. Nights like this, Kimberly usually took photos or selfies with her mother's cell phone that she borrowed while she was out and about, and then later posted the pictures to a social media account once she connected to a Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, on this particular night, there were no photos uploaded on her social media accounts or any other indications of what have happened to her. The efforts of Kimberly Avila's family to find her throughout Brownsville, Texas, Yvonne and her family have been working tirelessly to find out exactly what had happened to Kimberly. For the past six years, they have posted flyers, and that is just one of the many ways that they fight to keep Avila's story and her case alive. But almost every weekend, they get torn down. Now, this was an issue that Yvonne said she and her family have pointed out to the Brownsville Police Department before, but they just dismissed their questions and concerns. One time, the Brownsville Police Department told her the posters were being torn by someone who is quote-unquote mentally ill. Yvonne didn't buy the explanation. It strikes her as incredibly odd that it's just the flyers relating to the disappearance of Kimberly Avila. Even the ones that she had laminated would be burned in some cases. In general, she said she and her family have felt dismissed and confused throughout their interactions with officers and hurt by what they perceive as a systemic lack of care and support. More than once, she said the police have dismissed her family's concerns, offering that perhaps Avila just ran away. In their hearts, however, the Avila family can't believe this. They are confident that Kimberly knew how much she was loved and that she would never run away from them. At times, the Brownsville Police Department has been openly disrespectful. In one particular instance, Yvonne said one officer went as far as to imply that Kimberly was to blame for her own disappearance. According to her, in that instance, the officer told Elida Avila, Kimberly's mother, that because of what Kimberly did, an allusion to sex work and Kimberly's quote-unquote lifestyle 
a reference to her identity that Kimberly had to know what was quote unquote coming. Yvonne even questioned, quote, like, why would you even mention something like that to my mom? How do you think that makes us feel? End quote. It's frustrating. It's very frustrating, she says, explaining about the police department. Quote, I think they are not giving us the support that we need. End quote. Nell Gaither, who is the president of Trans Pride Initiative, a transgender justice organization in the Dallas area says she has seen various ways in which police have neglected the transgender community. Another reason why some community members feel the police has not done enough or progressed in the case is due to the department's stigmatized reaction to Kimberly's sex work. Quote, we have heard about that, but see, regardless of what he did, their job is to help us. If they are not doing their job because of what he did, then that's discriminating. Just because my brother had a different way of life or a certain way to live, doesn't mean that they should not help search for him or that he deserved it. That's still my brother you're talking about. That's my mom's son. That's someone we love, end quote. Yvonne stated. Gaither states, they are dismissing of persons who are not heteronormative or cisgender. We've had arguments with police when they misgender somebody, even presenting them on their blog as their birth assigned sex rather than how they actually present. I think, unfortunately, a lot of people don't care. It's easy to write off somebody that is non-conforming and it especially happens when somebody is engaging in underground economy like sex work or any other kind of survival work, end quote. On my research, there are no national or state level numbers when it comes to missing or disappeared trans people. Trans people face discrimination and violence in all aspects of their lives, and this violence is often deadly. In 2021, at least 56 transgender people were killed in the United States, making it the deadliest year on record for transgender people. The majority of these victims were black and Latina transgender women. A lack of reports on missing or disappeared trans people. While there are various reports from organizations such as the National Coalition of Anti-Violence Programs and Black and Pink that cover partner violence, bias violence, and issues that trans people face while incarcerated, none exist to document missing or disappeared trans people. This highlights an important gap in research and data collection about this vulnerable population. While Yvonne has been upset with the lack of support she received from the police department and elected officials, she is very appreciative of the support the family has received from local LGBTQ organizations. To their credit, Yvonne said it wasn't always this way with the Brownsville police. She noted that she felt that the detectives that was in charge of the case previously, Detective Melissa Gonzalez, was doing an earnest effort to try to find Kimberly Avila. And according to Yvonne, on one occasion, the police chief actually admitted to her mother that had it been up to him, that Kimberly's case would have been closed already. It was only thanks to Detective Gonzalez being one of the only supportive members of the force that has been working closely with the family. According to Ivan, here's a clip from their YouTube. Yo sí quiero decir algo en cuestión de la policía. Cuando agarraron el caso de Kimberly, el primer detective se llama Melissa González. Esa mujer es la única, créeme que es la única que tú le veías a ella el esfuerzo, el interés, el estrés porque llegaba así, pero también tuvo muchos troncos porque no tenía el apoyo que ella necesitaba. Ah, el caso de Kimberly ha pasado por cuatro detectives, cinco detectives, ¿verdad? Cinco detectives, a ella la quitaron del caso nada más así, de repente sin dar explicación, sin decirlo nada, nosotros entraron dos detectives, 
ya señores que tenían mucha experiencia y al igual nada a uh, nosotros hemos créeme que hemos luchado hemos pedido hemos uh, hablamos y decimos como ahorita ¿verdad? nosotros estamos bien agradecidos con ustedes porque nos han brindado el espacio para expresar y, y dejarles saber lo que está pasando unfortunately Gonzalez transitioned to a different role in Brownsville Police Department and now, with new people on the case, Yvonne feels that Kimberly is falling victim to indifference and discrimination that she can't help but see rooted in her gender-fluid identity. Yvonne states, quote, But that shouldn't matter. He's still my brother. He's still a human being. He's still missing and they are not doing anything, end quote. And it's not just the Brownsville police that has failed to give her and her family support. It is also local officials, like the mayor of Brownsville at the time, Tony Martinez. Ivan noted that he refused to make any statements regarding the disappearance of Kimberly Avila, even after the local publicity the case has garnered. According to Ivan, at one point, Commissioner District 2, Brownsville City Commissioner Jessica Khalifa promised Yvonne and her family, that they would help the family with their search. To Yvonne's knowledge, however, the help never came. On August 3, 2017, at a South Texas Equality Project called STEP as an acronym, had a press conference with Jessica Khalifa, who at the time promised the LGBTQ community and supporters that were present that she would donate $200 for the search for Kimberly Avila, but Yvonne said she doesn't know whether or not the donation ever materialized. And throughout the family's ordeal, one of the only inconsistent groups to stand by the family's side has been STEP. STEP, as I mentioned, is an acronym for the South Texas Equality Project. It is a coalition of individuals and organizations that advocate and provide support to the LGBTQIA community in South Texas. STEP was founded in 2017 in response to the lack of resources and support for LGBTQIA people in the region. STEP's mission is to create a more inclusive and equitable South Texas for all LGBTQIA people. The organization works to achieve this mission through a variety of programs and initiatives, and STEP is a growing and dynamic organization that is making a real difference in the lives of the LGBTQIA plus people in South Texas. If you are interested in learning more about STEP or supporting its work, please visit the organization's website or follow STEP on social media. I will provide their link in the show notes. Yvonne insists her family will continue fighting for Kimberly. Although she claimed the Brownsville Police Department and the city officials have been nothing but quote unquote, just pure disappointment. She said she is deeply grateful for the help that she has received from STEP and the LGBTQ community members throughout the Rio Grande Valley. Kimberly Avila has been missing for more than six years and her case remains unsolved. Her family and community are cooperating with authorities to find her, offering a $10,000 reward for any information they can help in the search. The circumstances of her disappearance are mysterious and it is suspected that due to Avila's identity as a transgender woman and involvement in sex work, she may have been more vulnerable to violence or harm. Kimberly's family believes that something strange has happened and that she did not leave on her own accord. There is still hope that she will be found safe since she was always loved and supported by her family. At the time of her disappearance, Kimberly was described as being 5 feet 8 inches to 6 feet tall, 200 to 220 pounds, Hispanic, with brown hair and brown eyes. She was last seen wearing a dressy black, short-sleeved blouse, a black skirt, black fishnet stockings, black stiletto heels, a black wig, and gray contact lenses. 
If you possess any details about Romero Kimberly Avila Jr.'s disappearance, kindly reach out to the Bronzeville Police at 956-548-7000, the Hidalgo County Sheriff's Office at 956-383-8114, or Brownsville Crime Stoppers at 546 Tips. No, pues no, nada no, más este, pues pedirle a la comunidad, verdad, de que no se olviden de Kimberly, que todavía el caso Está bien. sigue igual, sin ninguna respuesta, y también pues pedirle, verdad, de a la persona o a las personas que por alguna razón o casualidad hayan visto lo que, ¿verdad? Que si se fue en un mueble, que si se fue en un carro, una troca, lo que sea, que hagan una llamada anónima, ya no digo de que digan el nombre, sino que algo, pues que hagan una llamada. Por que le den esperanza a usted. Ándale. Ajá, porque yo todavía estoy con la esperanza, mientras no, ni no venga la noticia mala, tengo esperanza, ¿verdad? De que, de que, que ojalá por allá, no. ojalá que alguien lo tenga y que lo tenga bien. Y también, ¿verdad? Pedirles a toda la comunidad de aquí, más allá, que oren por, por, por ella, ¿verdad? De que donde quiera que esté, que esté bien. Y que sigan orando por la familia Ávila, ¿verdad? Para que Dios todavía nos fortalezca, ¿verdad? Para... If you enjoy our show, please rate us on Apple or Spotify. And be sure to come back and listen to us every other Thursday. Until then, this is Jasmine Castillo. We are voiceless no more. Hands Off My Podcast are a proud member of Darkcast Network, Uncovered.com, Transdo Task Force, Crime Survivors for Safety and Justice, and partner with Search and support San Antonio.